I'm Eric Claggett, and I'm on a mission to highlight tennis all over the world using blog, travel, and photography. I'll play with anybody, anytime. All you need is a racket, some balls, and a smile. This is Primal Tennis. What's up YouTubers and YouTubettes? I'm Eric Claggett and I am back in my hometown, Charleston, South Carolina. And I'm staying at a friend's house. As you can see, I got the bunk bed behind me. It's winter time, so it's a little bit cold here. <laughs> it's been about 45 degrees, so I'm still getting out on the courts and playing some tennis, but I wanted to talk to you guys a little bit about a subject that I have some experience with and something that I heard quite a bit as a teenager when I was switching to tennis and that is that tennis is a sport for sissies. It's a sissy sport and obviously I don't agree with that but that was kind of the stereotype that I remember when I switched to tennis. So I'm going to tell you a little bit about a story. I grew up playing like all the sports and I started off playing football, American football. That's obviously a pretty violent sport and you're running around with the football and people are trying to tackle you and the harder you hit someone, the easier they go down the ground. That's off, a, you know, it's a full contact sport. And then that would be in the fall and then I would switch to basketball in the winter. Because basketball is typically an indoor sport, so I play basketball in the winter, and then I would play baseball in the spring. And I would do that about four or five years in a row. I would do football, basketball, baseball. And I even played some soccer. I did a little bit of gymnastics because my dad signed me up for that. I really didn't want to, but he thought it would be good for my flexibility and my, my core strength to do gymnastics. I ended up playing football in eighth grade, American football. I was the starting quarterback for my team, and I remember being out on the football field in mid-August, and you're wearing these full pads with a helmet, and it's like 100 degrees out there, and we're doing full contract, full contact tackling drills. And I remember thinking to myself, like, what am I doing out here? <laughs> and the other thing is the boys were starting to get so big and fast and strong, and I was, I was holding my own. But it was just like, what am I doing out here? I mean, this is stupid. I'm going to get hurt. And that's exactly what ended up happening, is I broke my collarbone on a hit when I was playing quarterback. And I'm not bragging about me being quarterback, but our team was actually, we didn't win a single game that year. We went like 0-10. And, and yeah, it just wasn't that much fun. But I remember right next to the football field was uh, tennis courts. On these tennis courts, what I saw was... Uh, short skirts and pretty girls and it was actually co-ed and I saw some of the guys out there you know they're flirting with the girls and having a good time they're uh, dinking around hitting the ball I thought man I'm more athletic than those guys what am I doing on a football field this is just stupid so I was in eighth grade when I was about 13 and after I got hurt broke my collarbone I decided that you know what, I've been doing all this baseball, soccer, and football, and I'm going to give tennis a try. And when I did that, I fell in love immediately. One of the reasons I really liked tennis when I switched to it was, it's a lone wolf sport. You and you alone are responsible for uh, how good you become. Because it's a one-on-one -on -one sport, and as a junior, when you're going around playing tournaments, uh, it's really about what you put into it. There's no relying on teammates to carry you through to a win. Just you the ball and the opponent. And I found that I was able to move very quickly up the rankings because thanks to my dad, he was, you know, really on us practicing and practicing hard, so I had some good work habits. You get out what you put in in the sport. I want to bring up an example and that's Rafael Nadal. If you don't know who that is, you probably do because you're watching this tennis channel, but you got to go check out Rafael Nadal. This guy is a modern day gladiator, as tough as it comes. On the men's sport, these guys play best three out of five sets on 
the Grand Slams. There's four Grand Slams in one year. That is so hard to do at that level. I don't think people really understand. Um, it's different when you are uh, a beginner and you're not keeping the ball in play. And for one, your points are probably short, but they're not that physical because you're just tapping the ball. But these guys are ripping the cover off the ball. And the ball is coming so fast. When they hit it to the open court and you run and chase that down and get it back, they hit another one super hard with a lot of spin. You gotta run the other side of the court and get it. To do that three out of five sets is, it still blows my mind that they're able to do that because I'm a pretty good tennis player. I mean, one set, two sets, that's, that's hard on me and I'm 34. The other thing is Nadal has to deal with, and a lot of tennis players at that level, is a whole ton of injuries. Nadal's been injured uh, all over his body. He's had knee problems, he's had wrist surgery, abdominal tears, he's had a hip problem. So to call him, or tennis in general, as a sissy, when you're constantly battling your body, putting it through that much stress where literally every part of your body, I forgot his foot, has had some major problems. He deals with that and still comes out and plays. The other thing cool about tennis is just the mentality that it brings, which to me is actually a spiritual principle, which is to stay in the moment and play just one point at a time. In a Temple tennis match, you'll have hundreds of points. The best mentality for that is to be able to put the one behind you away so that you can focus on the current point you're at. And it's harder said than done. Uh, that's literally the battle in tennis. And it doesn't matter if you had a horrible shot or you had a great shot and won the point. It's literally just one point. So you really need to put that behind you, focus on the next point, and then not get ahead of yourself and say, hey, I'm up 40-15, I've already got this game. Because you really don't. You gotta focus on this one. Well, I'll say this, there are a lot a lot of girls that play tennis. If you like girls and want to be around pretty girls that are in shape, tennis is a good sport. I've always found it easy to meet girls and date girls because of tennis. And just because a lot of girls play tennis does not mean that it's a sissy sport because, well, it's up to you. I think you can do the math there. Just because it's a non-contact sport doesn't mean that it doesn't require a tremendous amount of physical conditioning. I think tennis is literally the smartest sport and the only one that I would put with that is golf in that you can continue to play your entire life well into your 80s or 90s if you live that long. Because one thing I found different with like football is that, okay, let's say you're really good and you play high school football. And let's say you're even really better than that and you play college football, American football. An extremely low percent even continues to play past that and into pro football. But guys that played in high school, played football, are not able to continue playing into their 30s and 40s and 50s and on. But that's one thing that separates tennis is that there's still tons of competition. And if you like to compete like I do, I find when I'm competing, I feel a lot better in my life. It, it's like it, it's a little bit of the, it gets my testosterone and uh, it's good for my health. And there's this uh, documentary highlighting this that I highly recommend you guys watching, which is, it's called Gold Balls and it's on Amazon. And it's literally about a group of guys that play competitively in tennis and they're all above 80. And there's age groups for these guys and they go around the country, the U.S., competing in tennis tournaments. And it's just like the four Grand Slams on the pro level. For this age group, they have a grass court championship, a hard court championship, a clay court championship, and an indoor championship. It's just so cool to see these old guys compete and how much they care about it. It's like literally the thing that's helping keep them alive at such a old age. So one, they're moving around so they're staying fit, but it's also that competitive part of it. And then internationally there's something called the ITF Senior Circuit. So you can compete internationally as a senior in different age groups. 
and you can go around, if you have the resource to do it, you can go around and play all these tennis tournaments and be internationally ranked. I just think that's so cool. And the same thing with the, the gold balls and stuff. Those guys are all competing to be number one in the U.S. for their age category. And if you win one of those tournaments, you get something that's called a gold ball, which is a small uh, gold tennis ball that you can put as a necklace or just keep in your trophy case. Another cool thing about tennis is that as you age, not as you age, but you can compete at any level and in any age. So let's say you're 50, there's still a category for beginner, and then there's intermediate and advanced and all in between. So you can pick up a racket when you're older and immediately start competing in a tennis league that's with other bu bunch of guys at that level. These are the reasons why I do not think that tennis is a sissy sport. But I would love to hear your thoughts in the comment section. And please don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel. As we'll be having some more talks and I'll have some cool content for you guys as well.